This is the brand new Grid X2 Pro from Polar, which is aesthetically my favorite watch from the brand, and it comes with some exciting news. And this news is not just about the Grid X2 Pro itself, but also about the Vantage V3. The reason is that it concerns a firmware update rather than a hardware change, and this firmware update will come to both the Grid X2 Pro and Vantage V3. In fact, the Grid X2 Pro and Vantage V3 are very similar, having identical electronics and software, with the main difference being in housing and design. In this video, I'll first concisely describe the new Grid X2 Pro and what it can do. After that, I will share some details of how this new algorithm works. Now, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to test the Grid X2 Pro yet in this video, but of course, we will put it through its paces once it actually releases. Finally, I also discussed with Polo where I was getting relatively bad results with the sensor set of the Vantage V3, which is the exact same sensor set as is now in the Grid X2 Pro. And of course, today I'll share with you what I found. Plus, I'll show you some more testing of the Vantage V3, including some quick tests on Teresa, since it turns out I might actually be the problem. So let's get started and talk about the new Grid X2 Pro hardware and firmware. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. First off, a disclosure, Polar sent me this sample of the Grid X2 Pro for testing, but it didn't have any influence on this video or my opinion, except for some quick fact checks I asked them to do. Also, this video will be a bit different from our normal videos, since we're not allowed to do any testing yet. However, what I can do is show you some graph drawings that represent how the new heart rate algorithm will work, and I can also show you some testing of the Vantage V3, which has the same electronics as the Grid X2 Pro. Finally, I can tell you what Polar found when I shared my raw Vantage V3 data with them, which wasn't performing that well. However, first, since the Grid X2 Pro was just announced, let me briefly share with you the 10 most important things to know about the Polar Grid X2 Pro. First of all, Polar will release two distinct models of the Grid X2 Pro. The standard Grid X2 Pro, either in night black or stone gray, and the more premium Polar Grid X2 Pro Titan. Now, the main difference between these two models are materials and aesthetics. The standard Grid X2 Pro features a stainless steel front case and weighs about 57 grams without the wristbands. And the Titan edition I have here upgrades that to an aerospace titanium casing, which is not only stronger but also significantly lighter at 48 grams without the wristband and 64 grams including this leather wristband. Second, in terms of price, this is not a cheap watch. The normal Grid X2 Pro is priced at about $750 or euros, and the Grid X2 Pro Titan is available for about $870 or euros. And this includes two different wristbands, one leather and one black silicone. Additionally, Polar also offers a bundle with the standard Grid X2 Pro and the Polar H10, priced at roughly 800 euros or dollars. Now, I generally do recommend using ECG chest strap like the Polar H10 if you want the best heart rate tracking under most circumstances. Now, all of these should be for sale on April 3rd with pre order starting now. Third, as you would expect, both models have dual frequency GPS, and compared to the Vantage V3, there has been an upgrade in terms of GPS. The Grid X2 Pro has this new signal boosting antenna designed at minimizing interference, which we will, of course, be putting to the test once the watch releases. Fourth, this GPS functionality is complemented by offline maps, and these are pre installed maps of Europe and North America, with the option to download additional regions for free via Polar Flow, with a total storage capacity on the watch of 32GB. Navigation tools include turn by turn guidance by Komoot, and it has now Strava routes compatibility, so you can sync your routes from Strava, and with a Strava premium subscription, you can access their route planner. You can either create a new route or even take a friend's uploaded ride and turn it into a route. Five, it also has a breadcrumbs feature for easy backtracking, which should work with all GPS outdoor sports profiles. This enables you to easily navigate back to your starting point or previous location, essentially leaving a digital breadcrumb trail to follow or revisit. Six, for those of you that already own a Polar watch, Strava will be coming to all Polar route compatible watches. And Polar will also release easier route syncing to the Grid X2 Pro, which was quite cumbersome before. And this will also come to the Vantage V3. What they say is that all you have to do is create a new route on Komoot or Strava, do the manual sync on your watch by holding the bottom left button for a second, and that's it. So hopefully it's as easy as that. Seven, another new feature is that Polar will also include new metrics to measure the rate at which you climb or descend. Now, first of all, this includes a real-time vertical speed, which is the instant measurement of your ascent or descent in meters or feet per minute. But now they will also include VAM, which is more for cycling, and this is the 30-second average ascent rate in meters per hour. 
8, the battery life will actually be identical to the Vanish V3. Polar did slightly change their definitions of different modes when releasing the Galaxy Pro series. They say it is up to 43 hours in performance mode, 140 hours in eco mode, and 10 days in smartwatch mode. Now, I won't go into all the details, but you can see the definitions right here, and feel free to pause the video. 9. As you might have noticed, the Grid X2 Pro and Vantage V3 seem very similar, and that's because they are. They will have the exact same interface, software, and electronics. The GPS antenna has been upgraded on the Grid X2 Pro, but otherwise is basically more or less a rugged and I also think more beautiful version of the Vantage V3. 10. Okay, those are way more features than I normally discuss in my videos. But what is actually most interesting to me is the new improved optical heart rate tracking algorithm that will come with both the Grid X2 Pro and Vantage V3. We have previously seen that algorithms make a huge difference, for instance for the Fitbit Charge 6. Now, the Grid X2 Pro uses the exact same electronics and sensor as the Vantage V3, I've told you this before, and we saw in my initial review that this did not perform very well in my testing in terms of optical heart rate sensing. Polar calls this sensor set Elixir, which is basically their fourth generation optical heart rate tracking, but also includes wrist-based ECG, SpO2 measurements, and nightly skin temperature monitoring. However, those are enough specs. I want to mention some data now. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I'm not allowed to test the Grid X2 Pro yet, at least not until Polar has finished their final firmware, so we have to wait for them to release that. So what I want to do for the rest of this video is first of all briefly discuss what Polar found when I did some more testing of the Vantage V3 heart rate tracking, and they actually looked at my raw signals. As I said, the electronics of the Vantage V3 are identical to those in the Grid X2 Pro. Second, I want to look at some more testing I did of the sensor in the Vantage V3 by using my other wrist. So I was using my right wrist before and I now switch to my left wrist, which has a small chance of resolving the problem. Third, I want to look at some quick testing Teresa did, since I might actually be the exception for which Polar sensor doesn't work so well. And finally, I want to discuss the new heart rate tracking algorithm that Polar will include in their 2.0 firmware that is targeted to be released around April 3rd, which could actually solve some of these issues I've found, though maybe not all of them. So let's get to it. Polar actually contacted me right after my initial review of the Vantage V3 and the new Polar Elixir sensor set, and they were very keen to figure out I was getting such bad results with their new optical heart rate sensor. Which is actually a good sign in my opinion since the fact that they were reaching out to me shows they have confidence in their new product. I actually did more testing, sent them the raw data and the conclusion they came to when looking at the actual raw signal is that on my wrist the watch doesn't get a good optical heart rate signal especially for cycling and running. So first let me briefly show you those results. Specifically, as always, let's start by looking at cycling indoors, which is a relatively easy exercise for watch to track given the limited movement and lack of tension on my arm. Now to test the performance, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Vantage V3 against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. And this is a new interval spinning session you can see right here. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue, green is my heart rate according to the Polar H and ECG chest strap, and in red is my heart rate according to the Polar Vantage V3 worn on my right wrist. And as you can see, the agreement is pretty decent, though there are some small artifacts. Several times when I had a quick increase in my heart rate, there was a slight delay in the Vantage V3 picking up that increase. So it's not amazing, but it's definitely not bad. And this is actually a particular situation that new algorithm might be able to solve, but I'll get back to that in a second. But okay, spinning is a relatively easy exercise. Let's now move on to a slightly more difficult exercise, running outside. So there's a bit more bumpiness when running. And here you can see the first example run that I did. And as you can see, the Vantage V3 in red followed along pretty okay with the Polar H10. There are some deviations, for instance, right here, right here, and right here. But this doesn't look that bad. And also this second example run wasn't that bad though, a bit worse honestly. There's some deviation right here in the beginning and also a lot of noise in the signal. And this seems to match with what Polar told me, that they cannot find a strong heart rate signal in my recordings. But as I said, the results tend to be worse when cycling outside. And here you can see the first example bike ride. And as you can see, the Polar H10 in blue-green often records a much higher heart rate than the Polar 
Vantage V3, it almost always detects it to low heart rate. You can see the same right here, only near the end of some segments does it sometimes detect the correct heart rate, for instance right here. And we see the same thing for this bike, right? Most of the time the Polar Vantage V3 on my right arm detects a way to low heart rate. Indeed, we can also see that in this new testing, the Polar Elixir sensor doesn't do that great on me. For spinning and even running, it was actually not too bad, but for biking, it really wasn't good. However, Polar mentioned that I'm likely the exception, since on testing other people, they almost always get better results. So first, they suggested there was a small chance that the results would look better if I switch wrists, since sometimes one of the wrists gives a better signal. So for the last few days, I did some quick tests of the Vanish V3 with the current firmware on my left wrist. However, first a quick side note, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Also, I'm trying to become part of the first people to receive watches to review from smartwatch companies. This is actually the first time Polo invited me as an initial reviewer, and I hope that will also be true for other companies like Garmin and Apple. If you want to help me make that happen, it would really help if you like, subscribe, or comment. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance of the Vantage V3 on my left hand. And again, let's start by looking at cycling indoors, which is displayed right here. And as you can see, it looks pretty decent, but it looks more or less the same as what we saw from my right hand. Sometimes it detects a segment basically spot on, like the first two segments right here, but also for several segments, there's a delay in it picking up an increase in my heart rate, for instance, right here, right here, and right here. So I cannot really see a difference here between my left and right hand. But what about running? Well, this is the first run I did, and this actually looks pretty decent, I would say. I did several intervals, and most of the time it was able to detect that change in my heart rate, those sometimes there was a bit of a delay as you can see right here for instance but also right here but overall this doesn't look too bad and also this second example run looks quite good most of the time the red line of the Vantage V3 on my left wrist looks very similar to the signal recorded by the Polar H10 so this is looking pretty good just eyeballing it it looks a bit better than what we saw from my right hand but again we didn't test that much so I cannot draw any firm conclusions but the most interesting thing is to look at cycling outside did this actually improve well, not so much. I would say maybe a little bit, but not much. So for this first example bike ride, quite often the Vantage V3 detected the wrong heart rate, sometimes too high and sometimes too low, but often wrong. For this second bike ride, we also see it doesn't match very well with the Polar H10. And the same is true for this third example bike ride. Maybe overall it looks just slightly better than it did for my right hand. But again, I cannot draw any firm conclusions here. And there's one exercise we actually didn't look at for my right hand and that's weightlifting. Now weightlifting is generally one of the most difficult exercises for watch to track because there's so much tension on my arm. So let's take a look at how it did. And that's displayed right here. Each time I did a set of exercises, my heart rate increased and you can see those peaks in my heart rate in blue. But what you can also see is that the Polar Vantage V3 wasn't able to detect those peaks in my heart rate. So this is really something I hope will be improved with a new algorithm. And just quickly, if you're curious how the performance of the Polar Vantage V3 with the current firmware compares to other watches, that is displayed in this overview right here. First for cycling indoors, and the Polar Vantage V3 worn on my left wrist is right here. Now we actually use a metric called correlation, in this case with the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, as the way to evaluate this. Basically what it boils down to is that the further to the right and the higher devices, the better is its consistency with the reference device. And in this overview for cycling indoors, I marked the Polar Vantage V3 worn on my left wrist in red and as you can see there are many better devices out there. It's actually very close to the testing I did for wearing it on my right wrist and also the testing I did previously. So all results indicate that the correlation is somewhere in this region right here. So amongst the poorer performing watches but we saw what the issue was and it wasn't that bad. But as you saw it did do a bit better for running and that overview is displayed right here.
I didn't test that many watches for running yet, so that's why there's fewer watches in this overview. But as you can see, the Polar Vanish V3 worn on my left wrist seems to be doing pretty okay, but it does potentially seem to be doing a bit better than when I wore it on my right wrist. So this is from this video's testing, and also compared to the previous video's testing when I was also wearing it on my right wrist. Now this is very preliminary, but it could indicate a small difference between wearing it on my left and right wrist. But as we saw, it didn't do that well on me for biking outside. And if we look at that overview right here, we can indeed see that the Polar Vantage V3 either worn on my left wrist, the testing I did in a previous video and worn on my right wrist in all cases isn't doing that well, at least on me with the current firmware. So for running, the results actually look quite good when I wore it on my left wrist, but the results were already pretty good for my right wrist, and this is a very limited sample size. For cycling indoors, the results looked okay, more or less the same to the right wrist, and for biking, the results still look quite bad. However, what is even more interesting is to see if the sensor set shows potential on other people. Now, I plan to test it on several people, but I only had time to do four small tests on Teresa, so let's take a look at those results. Now Teresa wore the Vantage V3 on her left wrist for whatever that's worth and she didn't test it for cycling indoors but she did test it for running and here you can see the first run that she did. And as you can see overall the Vantage V3 in red follows along pretty okay with the Polar H10 though right here there was a moment of some deviation where I detected a too low heart rate. Still overall it looks pretty decent I would say. And also for this second run most of the time it looks pretty good with a small moment of it detecting a too low heart rate. So this doesn't look that bad. But what about biking outside? Now Teresa only did one bike ride and the results are right here. But similar to what we saw for me most of the time the Vanish V3 detected a too low heart rate. So again, biking outside appears to be something that the Vantage V3 with their current firmware really struggles with. But what about weightlifting? Well, this looked a bit better than it did for me potentially. So you can see that some of her peaks in heart rate were detected, especially here near the end, but also a few right here in the middle and beginning. But overall, again, a lot of her peaks in heart rate are missed. So also for weightlifting on Teresa, the Vantage V3 didn't do that well. So also for Teresa, out of the different exercises she tried, running looks best and cycling and weightlifting look less good. However, as I told you, Pola actually showed us they're working on an improved algorithm that can fix some of the issues with their current heart rate measurements. And the concept is very interesting. The algorithm is aimed at improving performance, especially for weightlifting and interval training. And the idea is that sometimes the sensor will miss a quick change in heart rate, for instance, when weightlifting. And to actually understand how the algorithm would work, let's look at this example weightlifting session I did with the Vantage V3 I showed you before. Now what we saw before is that it couldn't detect these peaks in my heart rate, but what you might also notice is that often at the end of the peak, it's all of a sudden able to detect my heart rate. So there's an increase, I stop training and then right here it's able to detect my heart rate again. And this is the type of thing that the algorithm is trying to correct for. So let's look at this second interval right here where it also all of a sudden was able to detect a decrease in my heart rate, but it wasn't able to detect a peak in my heart rate. So if we expand this one right here, we get this plot right here. So it had this low heart rate, but it would look at the raw data and check hmm, maybe there was actually a higher heart rate. And then in an ideal world, it would come up with this corrected heart rate in green right here. So this is not actual data but just a representation of the concept. Now this process will have a delay of around 10 to 20 seconds meaning that you will not see the corrected real-time live heart rate on the watch itself. However it will be corrected before the watch syncs the data to the Polar Flow app. So in the Polar Flow app you can only see the corrected data and not the original data shown on your watch face. Now this 2.0 firmware update is targeted to be released on April 3rd and this is one I'm excited to test since it could improve the heart rate tracking on both the Grid X2 Pro and Vantage V3. So that's pretty cool, but let's see if it works as well as presented. By the way, this should work with any type of exercise, but Polar mentioned that especially strength and interval training will see significant improvements this way. Now, of course, I'll share my testing with you as soon as we get the software update. 
In the meantime, if you do decide to get a Polar Grid X2 Pro, a Whoop Strap, an Aura Ring, an HD Pod 3, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, want to potentially save some money and at the same time support the channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now, given that you watched this whole video on the Grid X2 Pro, check out this video on my top recommendations for sports and health tracking. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.